Hey friends, I'm CK, and today I wanted to take my most popular reel so far that has somehow amassed uh, over a million plays on just my Instagram and my TikTok um, and many more all over the place. It's been reshared a million times. And what I wanted to do is to take that and turn it into a full video where I explain kind of what's going on, a little bit about how to build these responsive layouts and using the Breakpoints plugin to make these responsive designs have breakpoints and be truly responsive the way that they would be on the web. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I want to get into is how to build these responsive designs. Um, not just with the Breakpoints plugin, which switches the appropriate designs with the appropriate breakpoints, but actually making the designs responsive so that as you resize the screen, they adapt the way that you'd expect. So I have three frames here, my MacBook Pro, 14 inch, uh, an iPad and an iPhone. So these are you know, three kind of like typical breakpoints. You have like a desktop, a tablet and a mobile. And I'm gonna build a layout that kind of is responsive in each of these. And then we'll use the breakpoints plugin to link these up and turn them into a fully responsive kind of design. Okay, so let's start here with the MacBook Pro. First thing I'm gonna do is hit Shift A, which is going to make this frame uh, auto layout. And that's gonna make it easier to make things responsive and it's gonna lay them out nicely for us. So I'm just gonna make sure that height and width are fixed. The auto layout direction is column. I'll make a gap of 64 and zero padding on all sides. First thing I'm gonna do is I'll put a frame in here. I'll make it fill container. I'm gonna make it a fixed height of 64 and this is gonna be our nav bar. I'm also gonna give this auto layout and make sure this is fixed. I'll put things in the center and with this selected, if I hit X, it's gonna change the spacing to auto. Then I want 32 pixels of horizontal padding, and just for good measure, we'll do 16 pixels of vertical padding. So for this example, I'm just gonna use a bunch of sort of wireframes, you know, just a bunch of boxes. Obviously in your designs, you'll want these to be actual designs. So I'll put a mock logo here. It's literally just gonna be a little circle with background color, that's the layout grid. Here we go. And then I'll put another frame We'll call this one links. I'll just name these logo nav. Okay, and then our links is also gonna have auto layout. So shift A, we're gonna center them. Auto layout direction is gonna be row. We'll give 16 pixels in between and make sure it hugs contents and hugs contents. And here we'll put a couple of frames just to imitate some links as you, that you might have on a website. We'll do width 80, height of 16, and we'll go to fill. Duplicate this a couple times. So now we have a navigation bar that looks Pretty good. It looks like a nav that you might have on a website. And you'll see that because I used auto layout, right? This is filling container uh, and it's got spacing to auto. As I resize the screen, the nav bar resizes the way that I would want it to. So next we want to put in some content, you know, a main kind of body. And I'm gonna build sort of like a grid layout that looks something like this. And we'll do that with auto layout as well, just to make sure that uh, again, everything is nice and responsive. So I'll start with one big frame and I'll call this card. And then I'm just gonna copy these properties here. So we have the radius and the background color and we have our card. I'm just gonna duplicate this and make this 200 by 200, okay? Put these next to each other down here. And then I'll select these two cards and hit Shift A. And this is gonna be one of our rows. I'll make sure the spacing is 24 and I'll duplicate this and then I'll select both of these rows, hit shift A. This is a column and we'll make the spacing 24 as well. So it's nice and even. And then finally, we'll take all of these and hit shift A again. This is another row with our gap is 24. And we'll wanna make it so that this card here fills the container. That way it's the same height as these cards over here. You'll see that everything is nice and even. And then for good measure, I'm going to make this fill container and I'll make these fill container as well. Hit enter, make this fill container and then make these cards fill container. So now as we resize this, everything is kind of uh, spreading out evenly. So now I'm gonna take this column and I'm gonna put it down here, duplicate it and I'll add two more uh, cards in here. And then as we make it the same size, you'll see that all the cards uh, are kind of the same even size, which is really nice and satisfying. Then I'll hit shift A on these, call this a column, make sure the spacing matches as well. So everything is 24 and I'll duplicate this a couple times. And now we have a layout here. We make sure that all of these fill container. So using 
auto layout, we now have a pretty nice and responsive uh, layout. Now I can make it a width uh, of a container. So I'm gonna just do 1040. That's just like a, a random value I picked and paste it in here. And we now have a nice layout that looks pretty good. So what we wanna do now is take this layout and adapt it to tablet, right? So we'll make this go all the way down to about maybe here. 1200. I'm just going to make this container actually a little bit smaller. So I'll do 880. Um, imagine this is like a blog or something and we want to keep it pretty slim. So from here, we want to adapt this layout to tablet, as I mentioned. So we'll take this nav, we'll copy it. Before we paste it in here, I just want to apply auto layout with shift A and make sure that our width is fixed and our height is fixed. We'll make the direction vertical. We'll give this 32 pixels and zero padding and make it centered. And now we can paste in the nav bar and just like before it sort of stretches the way that we wanted to. Then we can take our body here and paste it here. And I'm going to make this fill container from here. I'll also give it a horizontal padding of 32 pixels. That way there's same padding on the right here as it is on the top from the nav bar. And then because this is smaller, it's on tablet and there's less uh, real estate. I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to make it a two column layout by just deleting these here. And we'll just duplicate a couple of times, click content, and we now have a nice horizontal layout that stretches with our screen. So and I'm thinking maybe we go in here and make this 32 as well, just so everything is like really even. Everything is perfectly spaced out. Mm, I take it back. Let's make this 16 and 16. So now there's 16 pixels between all of these cards. Mm, I'll make them all a little bit taller just to make them a little bit more even. There we go. And again, this could be like a blog or a list of some sorts. And then finally, I'll take this nav again, copy it. And before I paste it, apply auto layout. Make sure it's centered. We'll make our gap 16, padding of zero all around. Make sure it's fixed width and fixed height. And then if we paste the nav in here, it'll look a little, it's okay, but it's a little bit janky. Um, and we don't really want a bunch of links on mobile. Usually we expect to see sort of like a hamburger menu. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna rename it to menu. I'm gonna command R to rename all of these lines. I'll just rename them to line. I'll make them 24 pixels wide, two pixels tall, and then I'll make the menu actually uh, flex, but vertical with a gap of four. Nice. And we have a nice little uh, hamburger menu icon. Also because we're on mobile, maybe we want our nav to have less padding. So we'll go from 32 to 16 and we have a nice mobile nav. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take this main content and paste it in here. And then we'll make it a one column layout. So we can actually take all of these. So we have all of our rows and I'm going to hit command shift G to ungroup them. Now we have a bunch of cards and we're just going to make them fill container and we'll make the height uh, fixed height of still 200. And then to match our spacing here of 16 pixels. And because on mobile, we have less real estate. We'll make the horizontal padding also 16 pixels on this column. Make sure this is clipping content. And we now have our layout for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And of course, everything is scaling nicely because we built it with auto layout and we set up the right kind of properties and constraints. So now that we have our three designs for our three various breakpoints, we can link them up using the breakpoints plugin. So I'm gonna hit command slash and open the breakpoints plugin. You can see that I can create a new adaptive layout. And so we're gonna start from one, which is the smallest. And our second one is gonna be 467. And now I'm gonna add another breakpoint here, which is gonna be 767. And then I'll add the largest one, which I'll make 991. And so what you can see is that we have this canvas here to play with. And as I scale it, it sort of changes in size. And as I get to the second breakpoint, it changes to a different style. And as I go to the lowest breakpoint, it's a different one again. So we now have three breakpoints to work with. And now that we have these breakpoints, we can start filling them in. So I'll hit plus on the largest breakpoint and select this frame right here. Hit plus on the middle breakpoint and hit this right here. And then I'll press plus on the smallest one and make it our phone. And now we can see that as we scale this, uh, we have a bit of an issue that we can fix now, but this gets smaller and it changes to the appropriate breakpoint at the right size. So when it's on mobile, we have our hamburger menu and one column. And then on tablet, we have our two column and our links. 
And then above that, we have this layout here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually make this a little bit taller. So we'll make it maybe this iPhone height, which is 932 pixels. So we'll do 932. And then we'll also make sure that this has an appropriate width. So maybe we'll make it actually fill container as well. And we'll make the padding on the right and left 64 pixels to match the top. And now as we scale it, it scales as we would expect. So this is just like a mundane example of how you might use this. Again, I wanted to mostly show how you can build responsive layouts using auto layout and how to showcase them using this plugin here. Comment that I get a lot on Instagram and TikTok is what's the point? You know, why would I do this? And I think this isn't necessary. Um, you could definitely show a developer and say, this is the breakpoint for desktop. This is the one for tablet. This is for mobile, build it. It's just a nice visual example. If you're pressed for time, you're pressed for resources, don't spend time building this. Once you have these breakpoints, it's a couple of clicks to set it up. But again, it's not super high priority. I wouldn't prioritize it over other work. But what it can do is it can help you communicate. So if you want to communicate with your stakeholders or your developers, especially, you know, less tech savvy stakeholders, you can actually show them exactly what the design might look like as you go through these various breakpoints. And also, as you saw, it can help you maybe test out the designs, right? So as I was stretching it, um, you know, the design wasn't quite working and I went back and I tweaked it. But another use case that you might have for this is documentation. So what I have here is a component. Pretend I'm building an app with a Pokedex or, you know, a Pokemon team. And I have this component here, which has three breakpoint sizes. It's got a large, a medium, and a small. So my large breakpoint is this kind of card with a three column layout and it doesn't scale. And then we have our tablet, which is two columns. And we have our mobile, which is this kind of vertical column layout. And so what I've done is very similarly, I've created a frame for our playground. And this frame has the component in the middle. It has a badge saying what breakpoint this is. And then I put a little badge saying that it's responsive. I did the same for tablet. So you'll see a different breakpoint. And we have that second component, the medium sized component. And this is still in container. And then the same thing with our smallest, you know, breakpoint base and this SM breakpoint, which actually, yeah, this should say SM. And it's also filling the container. And essentially all I had to do was open this breakpoints plugin and create a new adaptive layout that had this as the largest breakpoint, this is a smaller breakpoint, and this is a smaller breakpoint still. So you can see here, if I click into it, we have our three breakpoints and all of them have been linked to these three frames. And now what I can do is in my design system documentation, for example, um, I might have you know this header up top that says this is a team card. Uh, maybe you provide a description. And then what you can do is show a real responsive example of how this component should behave. So again, uh, at larger sizes, it just kind of stays in the middle. It doesn't scale. And then as we go down to tablet, it changes in size and it scales. And then as we go down to mobile, it has this one column layout that also scales. Again, I wouldn't necessarily do this all the time, especially if you don't have a lot of resources or if you're really crunching and trying to get a design system built. But if you're refining things, you have some time to make your design system really nice and interactive and uh, really well documented, you might wanna do this, go a little bit above and beyond and create something really nice. So that's it. I wanted to do a little bit more context again, show you how this might be used. And also I've turned this into a file that you can now get on my Patreon. So as always, if you want this file or any of my previous files for tutorials and future files, head over to my Patreon at the link in the description. And if you like this video, please subscribe, leave a like, and maybe leave a comment letting me know how you might use this. So yeah, that's been it for me. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new, and until next time, happy designing.